If you wanted to know what are the best topics for lunch and learns to attract the most agents, you are listening to the right episode of the Loan Officer Leadership Podcast. I am your host, Steve Kyles. Uh, thank you for being with me each and every week. Uh, today, I, uh, I'm i going to talk about one of the questions that came up in the Loan Officer Breakfast Club. Uh, I absolutely love this. But before I do, let me just remind everybody we're powered by the mortgage marketing animals. Uh, just love being on this journey. And and I also want to give a quick shout out. Um, we are doing an ethical bribe. So uh, if you'll give us an honest review, uh, we're going to put a mortgage marketing animals tumbler in your hands. Uh, two, they are so awesome. It's a mortgage marketing animals tumbler for an honest review where you consume content or podcast. Uh, send a snapshot of the review that you've given. Send it to support at the marketing animals.com. Go to Apple, iTunes, or uh, wherever you consume and just give us an honest review. Tell us how the podcast is impacting your life. Uh, thank you, Erica MLO uh, said, great podcast. I like this podcast because they keep it real. So thank you for the review. Make sure that you're sending uh, that to support at the marketing animals. We're going to put uh, support at the marketing animals.com, support at the marketing animals.com. We're going to put a tumbler in your hands. Uh, so tell us where to mail it to, as well as a screenshot of your review. And it, it, we just love it, man. We got great swag. We want to give it to you and just say thank you for being a part of the journey and giving us an honest review. So Today's topic came straight out of the Loan Officer Breakfast Club. So our dear friend, Frank Gray, who's a part of the Marketing Animals, um, runs the Loan Officer Breakfast Club. It's every Monday through Thursday, uh, Eastern, 8.30 Eastern to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And what you'll do is if you're not sure what that is, go to LoanOfficerBreakfastClub.com, register, and it's where hundreds of loan officers show up Monday through Thursday. <clears throat> One of the best ways to start your day as a loan officer, and man, it's phenomenal. So Frank goes through sharing the wins and what loan officers are doing in the daily success plan, uh, the calls and the appointments, the talk tos, the leads, and uh, it's sharing the wins and masterminding and best practices. And Kristen uh, has Kristen's corner. So uh, in our Facebook group for the Loan Officer Breakfast Club, uh, what happens is people are asking questions and these questions are getting hundreds of comments. And this was one that Milvia Seppin um, put out here recently and had a ton of questions and comments. And so it's a Loan Officer Breakfast Club question. I'm kind of calling it, you asked for it. And it's what are the best topics for lunch and learns to attract the most agents. What a great question. So um, really appreciate uh, Melvia, you asking that question because all of the comments behind it were so good. But I thought, look, this morning on the Breakfast Club, uh, I literally had a chance to share some of my thoughts behind that question that I think will be important for you because lunch and learns are a powerful tool. I love leveraged events. Uh, I'm really good at leveraged events, and many of you who are listening are too. I love to speak. I love to be in front of a crowd. Uh, I think I communicate well. We know how to gather an audience. We know how to get the right people there. So here's what I thought. Look, it came up this morning. We talked about it. I'm going to throw up a quick podcast episode. Uh, that way you can hear uh, more on this in detail. So here's what I did. I wrote six things down about leveraged events. The topic is what's the best topic for a lunch and learns to attract the most agents. And I thought before I give you the, some of the top topics that we've seen attendance in, let me tell you a little bit about what my thought process is. Number one, you got to have the fundamentals running first. So when it came up, one of the things that, that I think is important, if you're closing less than five transactions a month, don't do a leveraged event. Don't do a lunch and learn. Stay focused on Thor's hammer, which is reaching out to new qualified agents. Because look, what moves the needle the most is agents that are meeting with qualified agents that are producing eight or more buy side transactions a year, meeting with them face to face or Zoom. And then at the end of that 30 minute meeting, closing for the commitment. Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Agent, man, it sounds like we may be better together. Uh, 
golly, I just, I'm thrilled with your story. I think you're doing an amazing job. We've got a great team. Let me ask you this. Who do you have today uh, that you need to get pre-approved uh, or that we could help you get pre-approved to ensure it's a great use of your time this weekend when you show them homes? You have to close for commitment. If you're doing one to five or zero to five transactions, do not do a leveraged event because it's a distraction to getting your first fast results. It's a distraction to getting um, the closings built up to five or more. You get to five or more transactions and you say, hey, a couple of things. Um, I like the leveraged events. I like presenting material. I've got great content. I know how to rally a team uh, so that we can fill the room with the right people. Then a leverage event may be good for you. I'm a producing branch manager. Some of my loan officers do leveraged events. Uh, some of them don't. I personally do one every other month. We love it. Uh, but I'll tell you this, there's tactics behind it and we've already got the volume that warrants another pillar of business uh, because it's another way we're touching our realtor community. It's another way we're adding value, but we've got the volume and loans that are coming in. If I'm trying to get to five, don't be distracted. If I'm over five and especially over 10 or 15, and you've got the bandwidth, you love to do it, you're good at it, then this is a great opportunity. So if get the fundamentals running first, that's number one. Focus on Thor's hammer till you're over five units, over 10 units, over 15. Then start looking at a lunch and learn or leveraged events. Number two is you got to know your why. Don't do an event without knowing why you're doing the event. Here's what I mean by that. If you do a leveraged event or you do a lunch and learn, my question is what result What's the desired result? So many times it's like, oh, that's a great idea. We'll do a first time home buyer seminar and we'll do a realtor seminar and we'll do this uh, financial planning seminar and we'll do all of these things without thinking about the desired result. If you're doing an event to draw realtors, the question is, what's your desired result? And let me tell you what mine has been in 20 years in the business, having done probably hundreds, if not at least a thousand leveraged events in my career, because this has been something literally, um, I'd love to do it even pre-COVID. I was doing one every single month. Now we do them every other month. Um, and we've also utilized Zoom on some of them versus in person. And that's a great strategy too. But my desired result is this, <clears throat> used to, it was to fill the room. Now what I've realized is if I get you to an event it's getting you there to hear me as an expert, to facilitate a conversation, really to lead you into a one-on-one -on -one new qualified agent appointment. Because here's what I'm doing is the event won't get you business. The event will give you credibility. The event will help you network with the right people and bring the right people in the room. The event is an attractor if you have the right topics, but there's got to be an end result. And that end result is I'm leaving this event. My team is leaving this event with three to five qualified agent appointments. So we will literally take a calendar to the event and at that event work to fill that calendar so that we're meeting. Like if my events on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm going to meet with at least three to five new qualified agents so that we can go deeper and build more relationship because in that event, that event in and of itself is not a win. It's an ego stroke. If it doesn't take it deeper and actually close for commitment. Now I'll tell you this, my close for commitment will be, hey, we'd love to, to meet and invest 30 minutes with you after this event uh, to see how we're better together. I'm confident my team's processes and structures are going to help you make more money. And people say this all the time, Steve, how do you make me more money? It's because we have a real-time referral program. I'd love to sit down and show you more about it. What is the real-time referral program? It's simply the DSP. So our result for the event is to book and schedule qualified agent appointments after the event, because if I meet with 10 new qualified agents, new to me, not new to the business, but new to working with Steve Kyles and my mortgage team or our branch and the loan officers that are in the branch, what happens is for every 10 we meet with statistically, two to three will start actively referring you. And that's where the win is. You do this work to get the result. I do the event 
in order to get the one-on-one -on -one new qualified agent appointments because if I get 10 of those, I'll get two new active agents referring me business this month, and that's what moves the needle. When I'm looking at my why, I would do a leveraged event as well because, number one, it's you got to get the fundamentals running first. Five or more transactions don't do it. Five or more, I mean, five or less transactions don't do it. Five or more, it, and you've got the bandwidth, you can do it. But I would look at my why. I would look at, am I good at doing leveraged events? And do I love doing leveraged events? And if I'm not good at it and I don't love it, then don't do this. Find another thing to do that gives you bandwidth and, and another way to get in front of qualified agents. You got to have results, be the focus, good at it, and you love it. My number three is this. Let's talk about topics. Um, so number one, I got to have the fundamentals closing five or more transactions to really consider it. Number two, I got to know why I'm doing it and make sure that I'm good at it and I love it. Number three, the topics. Uh, this is a great uh, 20 years of doing leveraged events. I'm just really good at events. I, I love it. I know how to mobilize people. Uh, what I've really learned is this. I used to come up with topics I thought they were interested in. What I've realized is if you can answer the question in a real Realtor's head. What are they thinking? And I build a topic around that. I can fill the room with the right people. So let me give you an example. In today's environment, uh, what are people really looking at now? Like agents that are producing, uh, the agents that I'm going after, what do they want to know in today's environment? And as I ask you that, <clears throat> what are the answers? And I might even get three to five of my top producing agents that currently are on my Focus 40. They're actively referring and just saying, hey, Brandon, what's up, brother? Hey, tell me this. What's the conversation going on in your head? Man, you did 40 million this last year in real estate volume. And this is a, a real friend, a real conversation, a real agent. Hey, what what is it that you're wanting to know? And then I'm going to listen. And then I may call Oscar, another friend of mine, a broker owner here in the Houston market. And I'm going to say, Oscar, what are you thinking about as a broker owner producer? Uh, what does it look like? And he's thinking more about his agents. He's concerned about agents getting listings. Um, what are top producers doing? So you're going to hear the conversation that your agents are having and not the struggle bunnies, but the ones that are already producing and build topics around that. So let me give you an example in doing this. These are real classes uh, that we have put together and with massive success because we asked the question. Uh, number one is business planning. Uh, we do one right now that is around how to plan out um, your 2023, how to outperform the boom. Like that would be a great topic in the business planning because people want to outperform what they did in the past. So if you can help me in structuring and planning my business in a one and a half, one and a half hour lunch and learn, man, I want to go to that. Here's another one. Uh, how to win more listings. What a great conversation. Uh, meet the appraiser. Now, I would say meet the appraiser has wouldn't probably be as a good a topic right now, but when there's multiple offers, when the values are being pushed, and I'll tell you in our markets, some of the areas, they are still going over list price, especially in the lower priced homes. And so meet the appraiser for certain markets may be a relevant topic. How to overcome um, low appraisals and ensure your listing hits the value or your sales price. So you're finding topics that are relevant. Another one is a top producers panel. We just did this one two months ago, massive success because here's the way we promoted it. Come listen to three top producers who are doing 20 to $40 million in today's environment and how you too can excel in capturing more buyers and listings uh, without working more hours. And so you find topics that are relevant and you know are not going to attract the struggle bunnies you want the top producers to attend uh, multiple offer madness was one we did last year whenever it was crazy in the multiple offer madness a uh, real-time referral program is one that you're talking about the dsp so these are great topics business planning how to win more listings meet the appraiser top producer panel multiple offer madness real-time referral program um, these are things we've seen success with but i think even more relevant than that is talk to your top producers and ask them what is on your mind what is the conversation in your head if we had a one hour lunch and learned where we invited a handful of top producers what would you want to show up for 
And I think that will help you with your topic. So number one, if you're doing five or more transactions, this is a good option a month. Number two, you got to know your why. Number three, your topics, which I just gave you. Number four is partner with strategic partners. Uh, when we do events, uh, I don't do events alone because I want help lifting in the work. So what I'll do is like, I got a great title company local. Um, my dear friend, Deanna, her and I have been partnered together for literally 12 years. When we do an event, she and her team uh, fill the room with the right agents. And I never have to walk into an empty room or the wrong agents or the wrong people because we've been working together for so long. We know, look, we're looking for qualified agents that are currently and actively producing. So our invitation are more personal and handwritten. We're, we are doing some social media push, but that's really because we want people to see we're being active. The real people that show up are the ones you personally invite and you go after the ones that are qualified. So we'll bring in a title company, an insurance company, a home warranty company, and a home inspection company. And then we're looking at every person who's a part of the event has to bring their top five agents to the event where there's no overlap. And, and you're talking, you've already got 20 to 25 top producing agents showing up at the event and we distribute, Hey, it's your responsibility, Deanna, to make sure you got at least five qualified agents show up. Um, literally, Hey, Rick, you've got yours. Uh, and you go down the list of your team members to bring it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the content. I'm going to ensure we got a great class, great content, great topic, and we're going to knock it out of the park. So when you're doing it, you got to be doing five or more consistent transactions a month. You got to know your why. You got to have some great topics. You got to have strategic partners. Hey, and one thing we do too is four weeks out, we meet. Uh, we have a 30 minute meeting or a one hour meeting. Uh, three weeks out, we have at least a 30 minute meeting. Uh, two weeks out, we have a 30 minute meeting. And one week out, we do a 30 minute meeting to make sure we're on track for a powerful leveraged event. Uh, number four. Five is going to be this quality agents over quantity. And I'll tell you this. I learned this from Carl White, one of my dear friends. You guys hear, hear from him all the time. Uh, I used to be real big about filling the room. Uh, it was like, man, I'm going to get a hundred people in the room and we're going to crush it. And I'll never forget. Um, we did an event and I'll tell you a true story in Houston market about three years ago, two and a half, three years ago, I did an event here and Carl and I jumped on a, uh, we were on a quick call and this was before I was a partner at the marketing animals and Carl and I became dear friends. And I was just saying, Hey man, I saw you did an event in Dallas and, uh, I'd love to hear more about it. And he said, yeah, I know you did your event in Houston. How did it go? And I said, man, we had 150 people show up. It was great. I said, but at the end of the day, I lost 20 grand setting that event up. It was a great event, but I lost 20 grand. We didn't get it to not only make money, it just lost money. And I said, well, Carl, how many, how'd your event in Dallas go? And I'll never forget that. And he said, oh, it was good, man. We had 40 people show up. And and I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. And I said, well, I didn't tell him I'm sorry, but I just thought, man, I'm sorry. That doesn't sound like it was very well attended. And you know what he said? My next question was, well, how much money did you make? And he said, I made six figures. And I said, I literally said, you win. Uh, I mean, I'll never forget that. It was like, bro, you win. What? Tell me about it. And here's something that Carl White told me that I've never forgotten. He said, if I want to stroke my ego, build a crowd, like fill the room. If I want to make money, have smaller groups. And that was when we started pivoting our leveraged events um, because I still, I'm a producing branch manager. So for me, I begin, it was like a light bulb moment. It was like, wow, I got it. My ego says, fill the room. But if I want to make real money, it's about smaller, intimate groups. So when you're thinking about a leveraged event, it used to always be, man, let's make it a hundred agents. And listen, me and Deanna and our team have had hundreds of agents at events, like single events. Now our goal is we're looking for 20. Why? Because if there's three strategic partners that are with me and we got 20 agents there, I can connect with three to five. It's not fill the room for fill the room's sake. It's fill the room with the right people. So not quantity, but quality. And I know that's so counterintuitive because people are like, I want to be where people are at. Yes. But if you want to make money, the smaller intimate events is where it's at. And so I want to encourage you as number five, 
quality over quantity when you're doing these events. Because remember this, if I got a room of 100 agents and only five are qualified, is that better than a room of 20 agents and all 20 are qualified? It goes back to, do I want to be busy or effective? And effective says, I've got a room of 20 agents that are the right agents who now see me as an expert, who now understand that I'm a business-minded mortgage professional that can help them grow their business and not grow their business in what we're doing, but by ensuring the clients they refer have a smooth and flawless closing. But then we've got our real-time referral program, the daily success plan that is able to extrapolate new qualified uh, referrals that we can bring back to them to get them in their car and go buy another house. And so I would rather quality uh, quality over quantity. So that's a big thing, but it took me 20 years to learn it. Actually, 18, 19 years, because it was when I met Carl uh, and we started spending time together that I realized, wow, I don't need to fill a room. I need the right people to be in the room. And so I want to encourage you as number five, quality over quantity quantity. And then number six is this, don't ever have, and this is the last thought, don't have a leveraged event where you don't have a great call to action. So our close, and I got to remember this, look, my call to action is uh, look, my team and I can help you as an agent make more money. I'm looking to schedule an appointment with you so we can show you our real-time referral program and how our processes help you make more money and save more time. And if that's interesting to you, I'm going to be right up here at the front. I'd love to actually go ahead and schedule a 30-minute coffee with you tomorrow and Friday. I've got four slots available and would love to book with you. And I know that may sound crazy, but I'm closing for the commitment of the coffee so I can show them how working with me makes some more money. And really all I'm laying out is first off, I'm going to learn more about them, but then I'm going to walk through the real-time referral program, which is our daily success plan, our daily success plan on Tuesday. We're not hoping to ask for business. When, when you've got a client in process with us, we're doing our just ask Tuesday update. And when that client of yours, you referred to us refers, we're going to get them right back to you so you can have another purchase. On Wednesday, every client that's closed with us, we are calling them four times a year in the guise of a checkup, but to ask them for more business to bring back to you. Uh, number three is on Thursday when we're doing our pre-approved and looking calls, Mr. and Mrs. Agent. We're asking them not only how's it going in the house buying process to keep them motivated, but we're asking them our three by three. Hey, can I ask you a favor when you have a friend, family, coworker looking to buy, sell or refinance? Uh, would you give us the opportunity? Send us their information. We'd love to work with them just like we're working with you. And what we find is the all of these referrals, we've been able to help our agents make even more money because we got a process to selling. And not only are we going to ensure a smooth, flawless closing where we we close on time with clear communication and great follow-up, but our real-time referral program is going to help ensure when you refer, we're referring back to you because you are a strategic partner. If that's interesting to you, let's book a 30-minute call and let me show you how, a 30-minute coffee, a 30-minute face-to-face, so we can show you how partnering with us makes you more money and saves you time. And that's my close. I'm closing for commitment. We do not have events. We do not have calls. We do not have anything that doesn't have a result of asking for even more business. The more ask I make, the more business I'm going to get. So when I'm thinking about what are lunch and learns, leveraged events, how to have effective events, this is what I'm going to do. Focus on the fundamentals. Don't deviate until you're over five or more units a month. Make sure you know your why, which is the results. You know that you're good at it. You know that you love to do it. Number three are the topics. Have good uh, topics that are relevant to the agents or the industry you're serving. If it's a first-time home buyer uh, seminar, which are okay. I'm a bigger fan of the agents because they are the number one source of relationally referred leads. Number four, have strategic partners that you can count on that are not just showing up and writing a check, but are bringing qualified agents to the event. That is their entry to working with me and my team. Number five, 
quality over quantity. You would do better to have smaller events with the right people than to have larger events with fewer of the right people. And number six, you got to close for commitment. At the end, you've got to have a close for commitment. If you found value today, uh, here's what I'd love to do. Go into your close. Whatever it takes, don't have an event that you don't close and doesn't yield you a result, or you'll be busy and not effective. So Hey, I love it. Our Loan Officer Breakfast Club question uh, that you asked for. Uh, I hope this brings more clarity. I hope it helps you as you continue to thrive in today's environment. Hey, and if you want to know more uh, about how to have a great leveraged event, uh, book a strategy call with us uh, at freedomplanningcall.com. Myself and my team, we would love to to talk to you for 45 minutes. Uh, You'll need to schedule out 45 minutes, man. We will show you some of the strategies we're doing today to help you get in front of more of the right agents so that you can absolutely outperform the boom, outperform the boom, outperform the boom. Linking arms with us will help you outperform the boom. And so I'm excited. I love what we do. I hope this helps. Go to freedomplanningcall.com, freedomplanningcall.com. Make sure to share, subscribe, uh, leave us a review. If you do snapshot it, send it over to support at the marketing animals. We'll send you a mortgage marketing animals tumbler and remember this anything worth doing is worth doing badly just get started see ya